Hello, I'm Claire and I'm going to show you how to use thick threads in the bobbin. It's often called cable stitch and I'm often asked about it because it can seem quite mysterious and a bit tricky to do. So I'm going to talk you through different ways of how you can actually use thick thread in the bobbin. So the machine that I'm actually using today has a drop-in bobbin system. So I'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to it, but I also just want to talk about if you have a machine with a front loading bobbin. Because we're using thick threads, it's a good idea to actually buy a second bobbin case for your machine, mark it with nail varnish, and then what you can do is when you slacken the screw, you're able to feed the thick thread through. So that's a really good tip if you've got a front loading bobbin. I do know that different brands of machines have separate bobbin cases. Brother and Janome have special bobbin cases for bobbin work. But if you didn't want to invest in that just yet and you thought, hmm, is this going to be a technique that I like? I can show you how to have a go and see if it's something that you want to invest in. You might think to yourself, well, why would I want to do thick threads in the bobbin? Here, look at these trees. Don't you think they're just great? And that's literally thick threads in the bobbin. They were stitched upside down. So some of it's a bit of a surprise when you turn your work over, but I think it's really quite effective. And also just for decorative stitching. It looks quite effective, especially if you have a different thread contrasting to the thick thread that you've got in your bobbin. So I keep talking about thick thread in the bobbin. You probably think, well, what thick thread are you using? Well, I've used some cotton perle. So they come in different sizes. You've got fives, threes, sevens, and they come in all sorts of beautiful colors. And what I'm going to do is actually show you how to wind a bobbin. Because I think sometimes people think that you have to do it by hand. Some of it you have to do by hand, but you still can pass it through the tensioning mechanism. So on this machine, I'm going to feed it through my bobbin, through the hole like that. And I'm going to pop it on there. I'm going to push that over, ready. I'm still going to feed it through this mechanism here, like that. But of course I've obviously got to hold it. So when I put my foot on the pedal, it will actually wind the bobbin. And there you are, you can see. So that's how you wind the bobbin. By popping it through this mechanism, I'm making sure that this thread is actually under tension and it's correctly wound. So just hold it, let it go, wind it on. Because it's a thick thread, you do actually need to fill your bobbin because obviously a full bobbin of this stuff isn't going to have as much thread on as if it was narrower. So fill that up, we're done. And we're there, thick thread, all ready to go. So while we're here, I'm actually going to thread up with a normal sewing thread or a more normal decorative thread. This is my favorite, you know, Madeira Classic 40. Lovely decorative viscose thread, but you could use a polyester or a cotton. So thread up your machine as normal. And here we are, this is where we pop in the bobbin. Now normally, you have to make sure that you go into the tensioning mechanism. Well, I actually don't want to muck about with my bobbin case. So if you have a drop-in bobbin like this, this is what you can do to bypass the mechanism and just give this technique a go. So drop it in, pop it in the right way round, okay? And then before you put the lid on, bring it up. So needle in, needle up. Bring, I'm just bringing my thread up there. I'm just going to put the lid on. So I'm going to sew on a bit of calico and I need to pop that in a hoop. So it's a single layer of medium weight calico, cotton lining, something like that is absolutely fine for this. So if you just get your hoop, I've already slackened my screw, take out your inner hoop. bit of calico there, pop 
in your inner hoop push it all the way down and then if you just pull the calico up at right angles so that it's nice and tight and then just tighten the screw use a screwdriver if it gets a bit tricky now you're ready to go so what I've done I've actually got my thick thread just poking out the back that way and I haven't done anything else with tension or anything I'm just all threaded up ready to go because the bobbin hasn't got any tension on it whatsoever what you do need to do is to make sure that you go at a steady speed if you speed up or slow down you can actually end up with it where the system sort of goes at you it's the best way I can describe it and if I can show you this sample here you know it's smooth in some parts and then it's a bit wobbly in others now I know people like that technique it can look as if it's it's almost beaded but if you're looking for a little bit of a smoother line you will get that if you don't speed up or slow down too quickly the other thing to remember is any of these designs that you do just keep them quite open and if you're going back over yourself you actually don't want to stitch precisely on top of yourself you do want to just stitch by the side okay because otherwise if your needle hits that thick thread it could break so moment of truth so needle in press the foot down and here we go so I'm going to hopefully go at steady speed and see what we can do so oh there we are so I'm making sure that I move it and I'm going to do a curl and then I'm just coming to the side of it so I'm not back directly back on myself and I'm going to just do a leaf of course because this is the reverse of your work you could draw on the back of it if you had a design that you wanted to follow there's nothing to stop you oh, try not to speed up so just try to maintain that speed of course if your machine has a stop start button you might want to set it off with that and then you know that your speed is pretty constant so I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to stop now I know this machine has got a thread cutter and I normally would say yep cut the thread but because of the thick thread don't suggest you do that just bring your needle up and lift the presser foot lever and then just cut it this is a big reveal this is very exciting Oops. so oh, hang on. so we've just got a bit of thread there but if I just cut that look at that so I don't think we've got very many wobbles and that took not very much time at all imagine if you're doing that by hand so I really think that's quite effective so another way in which you can use thick threads in the bobbin is I've got a sample here and people often ask me how on earth I've done this that's thick thread in the bobbin and how it's been done is by putting some violin or thin felt in a hoop and you start in the center and you very very carefully go round and round and round it's a bit tedious to be fair I mean I got bored doing this size so you can imagine how I had to be patient to do something that big but when you've done it cut it out of the violin or, or the felt and then you are able to sort of pull it into shape and then you can actually stitch it to your piece of work and stuff it so that's another way of using thick thread but it's also great for doing trees now with the trees you just need to make sure that you're doing sort of little wiggles almost in a sort of vermicelli way where you're not actually crossing over yourself and that way you get these lovely trees 
So I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, then please subscribe. But of course, if you've got any questions or you're not sure about anything, just write below. We'd love to hear from you. It's great to keep in touch. See you again. Bye-bye.